Hi everyone. Well, a buddy of mine asked me to come by and pick up an old car part, uh, specifically a door handle, and uh, it's pretty ratty shape, um, but you can't get them apparently. Uh, I don't know what year, what make, or anything about it, but we're going to try it here. We can give the lizard a chance to see what it can do. Um, I've been liking it more and more lately. <laughs> Um, of course, that's to be expected because I've been doing more scans with it lately, uh, especially since uh, Jesse sent me the components for the color texturing. I love that. And the thing I like about it most is that you use your own camera, so the better your camera, the better your color texturing will be. But this uh, handle here, I'm scanning in geometry mode. I tried it on the turn in the turntable mode, but uh, it's just a little too big. I was having difficulty getting a scan, and it wouldn't hang off the table the way I wanted it to to get, you know, both ends. Uh, so decided to do a hand scan, the easy scan method. And uh, I'm going to show you the real time video. I usually condense things, but uh, I just too much trouble tonight. <laughs> I had too many things going on, so. This is in parallel with other projects I'm doing. And I apologize for not being able to show you the settings. Um, I'm just using uh, the Xbox recorder feature in Windows. And I'm um, not, <laughs> not fully up on how to make sure I can show you the drop down windows and stuff. So apparently uh, we can't see those. Here, I'm just I'm saying basement mode here. I mean, making a basement selection. I'm sorry. And uh, then I went back and deleted the selection, which took all that out. And I got kind of concerned about this leftover bits here, and I didn't seem to be able to last them and take them out. I tried a little bit, and, and I had done a practice scan of this before and done the same thing. And I uh, got to a point where I couldn't edit those out. I don't know what that is, if it's a bug or if it's me not doing something right. But it wasn't a big deal, really. That's apparently the edges of the turntable. Uh, I must have gotten some spray on there or something. I did a lot of handling of the part. So I might have transferred something to the edge that it picked up. But I'm going to append it to another scan. My, my aim was to uh, do three hand scans and then put them together. I haven't yet learned uh, how to effectively use the uh, manual mode. <laughs> so I try to get everything as, as good as I can and then uh, let the CR Studio handle it. And I'm, I'm becoming more and more impressed with how much it actually will do for you. Of course, I had to spray it because the handle is black. It's uh, a black plastic, uh, some kind of an overcoating of a foam core. Uh, uh, of course, I'm not going to duplicate the way it was built because we have uh, additive manufacturing today, and that's not how this one was built. We'll build it with a 3D printer. I'm thinking about material. A uh, friend suggested I should use Pet G, but um, I found TPU to be really tough, <laughs> really tough, and it has a nice feel on the hand. So I think I'm going to try to execute it in TPU. And uh, my Ender 5 Plus prints TPU. Pretty cool for a, a Bowden machine to print TPU. That's that's a plus. I'm just looking at the models. I, f I forgot to do something with that copper colored one. <laughs> I forgot to take the plate off. Uh, so I had to go back and do it. Or did I? Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember taking it off. But maybe I did already. The nice thing I like about my little mini computer that I did this on is that it's, it's, it's fast enough to keep up with 
more rapid movements of the scanner. You know, I didn't lose tracking there. I think there is a point here somewhere where I lose tracking, but it reacquires pretty easily. And I couldn't get those screws out of there, so I had to scan them with the screws in place. And in deciding, trying to decide how I was going to handle that, I uh, actually I picked up two of these. One that was really blistered on one side, really not usable much at all as any kind of a part. This one at least I think was usable, just some cosmetic blemishes and and uh, the, the coating coming off there we go I'm, I'm uh, making a basement selection again and then I'm telling it to delete the selection so the basement drops off and then uh, as I said before I really can't worry much about those little bits hanging off because I can't get rid of them like I said it's it's something that I'm doing wrong or there's a bug in the software once you do it once or twice or something I'm not going to worry about it right now because I can handle it <laughs> if nothing else I could put it into other software and, and edit that out I've learned a lot in the last year a year and a half what I thought was impossible for me before I kind of do routinely now yeah, see, I thought I didn't take out that copper-colored thing there, and i got to take that out. Yeah, the nice thing with the table scan, if you can get it on the table, is that uh, if you get a, a decent enough set of scans, uh, when you align them, it'll, it'll take into account that plate's there, and it'll be at all the different angles that you had the, the part while you were scanning. I did another basement selection there, by the way. Then knock it out with a delete. There we go. See, now I took everything out that time because I, I think because I didn't have the edge of the turntable in the scan. Now all three right there. Still got those bits, so I put it. Go ahead and align it and see how it does. You get to see it come together. I didn't get to see it because the little drop down window was in the way. But now that it's out of the way, you can see that uh, it did a pretty decent job. Okay, and then I'm gonna process it. See the graphic and all of that as it's it's just doing the, the meshing and all the operations it needs to do. As you can see, I just have everything ticked on and let it do with the defaults. I did drop the brightness down a little bit, or I'm not the brightness, but the smoothing. I dropped the smoothing down a little bit. I think it was at a two or three. Still have the cosmetic defects there because, of course, the scan picked up everything. But um, I can go into Mesh Mixer or one of the other softwares and smooth it out, get rid of that, make it look nice, and then I just have to worry about how to print it. <laughs> That's going to be the next step. I'll have to collaborate with uh, my buddy Jay and see what he thinks about uh, how we can go about it. I, th I think I could just uh, enlarge 
the holes after getting those screws out. Well, let me show you. I'll, I'll show you after this. It ended up that uh, those screws are kind of captive in the original part. And I think they were meant to be captive. Uh, when, when we looked at it, we thought that maybe the, the foam core had swollen and captured the screw or something like that. But when I examined it closely, I could see that uh, it's molded that way. It's molded to capture that screw. Now I thought about doing a scan of the screw to get its exact dimensions. And, eh, I could measure it and just uh, make the opening in the handle large enough to accommodate the screw and the washer. It has a lock washer and a flat washer inside there. I had to uh, take the damaged one apart, the one that's kind of useless, and uh, use it as a guide. But I'll show you what I mean with some stills here. See that, that screw? It's I had to dig it out of there. Anyway, I got to figure out what to do about that, and I'll update you on the next one uh, when I get some progress. Thanks for watching, guys, and happy scanning. See ya. Bye.